my faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me while I pray, take all my guilt away, from this day be holy thine. May thy rich grace impart strength to my fainting heart, my zeal inspire. As thou hast died for me, Oh, may my love to be pure, warm, and changeless be a living fire. While life's dark maze I tread, and grief around me spread, be thou my guide, bid darkness turn to day, wipe sorrow's tears away, nor let me ever stray from thee aside. When ends life's transient dream, when death's cold solid stream shall o'er me roll. Blessed Savior, then in love, fear and distrust remove. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayers and praise. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I will speak of your testimonies before kings, O Lord, and I shall not be put to shame. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Glory be to the Father and to the Son 
and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. I will speak of your testimonies before kings, O Lord, and shall not be put to shame. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. To God on high be glory and peace to all the earth. Goodwill from God in heaven proclaimed at Jesus' birth. We praise and bless you, Father, your holy name we sing. Our thanks for your great glory, Lord God. King. To you, O soul begotten, the Father, Son, we pray. O Lamb of God, our Savior, you take our sins away. Have mercy on us, Jesus, receive our heartfelt cry. Where you seated at God's right hand on high. For you alone are holy, you only are the Lord. Forever and forever be worshipped and adored. You with the Holy Spirit The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us steadfast in your grace and truth. Protect and deliver us in all times of temptation. Defend us against all enemies. And grant to your church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The first reading for Reformation Observed is Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 and 7. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God, And give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea, and the springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God. Walk about Zion, go around her, number her towers. Consider well her rampart, go through her citadels. That you may tell the next generation that this is God, our God forever and ever. The epistle is Romans chapter 3. 3, verses 19 to 28. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since 
Through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifest apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance he did not he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time, so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By the law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you abide in my word, you truly are my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The Son remains forever. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We join in confessing our mutual faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Fortresses are God, a trusty shield and weapon. He helps us free from every need that hath us now or taken. The only evil foe. Now means deadly woe, deep guile and great might, our 
turn his dread arms in fight on earth is not his equal with might of ours cannot be done soon were our loss effected but for us fights the valiant one whom God himself elected. Ask ye who is this? Jesus Christ it is, of Sabaoth Lord, and there's none other God. He holds the field forever. Though devils all the world should fill, all eager to devour us, we tremble not, we fear no ill, they shall not overpower us. This world's prince may still scowl fierce as he will. He can harm us none. He's judged the deed is done. One little word can fail him. The word they still shall let remain, nor any thanks have for it. He's by our sides upon the plain, with his good gifts and spirit and take they our life good same child and wife though these all be gone our victory has been won the kingdom ours remains. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Dear friends, the text which is chosen for our meditation is the gospel lesson taken from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 8, verses 31 through 36, with the addition of two verses. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my words, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are offspring of Abraham. Yet you seek to kill me because my word finds no place in you. I speak of what I have seen with my father. And you do what you have heard from your father. Thus far the text. Dear friends in Christ, outside on our church sign, we have a Luther seal, and around it we have three statements, faith alone, grace alone, and scripture alone. These mottos describe the confession of faith made by by the forefathers of the Lutheran church. To say that they are born because of struggle with the Roman Catholic Church would be a bit simplistic. In reality, they are born of the struggle with God's Word, 
the struggle between God's word and sinful human flesh. We see that struggle here with Christ in our text. You see, false doctrine is conceived in mankind's fallen nature. Sinfulness within each of us wars against the truth of God's word and God himself. False doctrine is damnable regardless of who says it or teaches others to trust it. We are Lutheran because we believe in the faith that is drawn from scriptures as the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther also did. The Christian faith is continually under attack from inside and outside the church. The great mottos that came from the Reformation, faith alone, grace alone, and scripture alone, stand in the battle against false doctrine as expressions of the truth that actually delivers freedom. Taking the first scripture alone, by nature, we are unable to see clearly now. What happened? Well, sin happened. When mankind fell into sin, they were no longer able to see things purely as God had created them. When we were created, our perceptions and understandings were pure. They were in line with God. We knew the truth naturally. Love of God and love of our fellow man was not a burden. Adam and Eve experienced the relationship with God that God intended. Full trust, completely unfettered, unobstructed love, worship in its purest form. Every day and everything received as a gift from God. Our first parents experienced marriage and life itself in its pure, holy form, without sinfulness. Can you imagine what marriage without the struggle of self-interest would be? Marriage without the art of compromise because there's no need for compromise. Children, work, and helping one another, all nothing but pure joy. Into this idyllic situation, Adam and Eve introduced sin. Now, sin is not just a boo-boo. It's not a little oops. They looked on God for the first time through the eyes of distrust. Man understands, man's understandings, perceptions, desires, and assessments of God were forever changed. Along with this change came the loss of joy and peace and love and life in the presence of God. Lost was also the pure knowledge of God. Gone was the innate understanding that God indeed loves us and desires us to be with him and his desire to be with us. Mankind was left dead in sin. How are we able to know the reality of God? How are we to know that God loves us? Look around you. You can't conclude that from the fires and the riots and the political distress that is in the world. You can't know that God loves us by the wars and violence and the death in the pandemic. That is a common experience for the people of this world. These are all a result of the chaos caused by our in introduction into sin and being adverse to God. Can we take God into the lab and put him to the test to know of his existence and character? No, of course not. How are we to know then and to have assurance that there is a way of salvation? 
Well, that's where the first of the mottos comes. Scripture alone, or sola scriptura. In his word, God made known to us what his intended creation was to be and how our life was supposed to be. In his word, God reasserts the reality of his love for us. In his word, God tells us of the salvation that he has established for us because of his love. This is why we hold to Scripture in, it, in all its parts. It is the only means to know that God loves us for sure. And that love towards us, which is for sure, is why we have the motto, grace alone, sola gratia. Why does God care? Why has he established a way of salvation for us? Well, Scripture makes it clear that God has not brought about salvation because of something we have done. He has not looked into us and said, oh my, aren't they cute? I'm going to save them. It is not because we have some good left in us. It is not because we have done things good or that we have tried hard. It's not because we have made good decisions. It's not because we have met minimum requirements of accountability. Now, our sinful nature is inclined to seek to earn God's love by our works. We want to make it up to him, to come up with ways that uh, we have added to and added to God's word of being saved. We keep coming up with ways that we think God should accept us. There is only one motivation involved in God's giving us salvation, and that is his grace. His grace alone, his love for us, not our works, not our efforts, not our attitudes. Because of grace alone, he promised Adam and Eve that one would come to crush the head of the serpent. Because of his grace, his undeserved love, he established a nation through whom the Savior was going to come. By grace, he gave a people to receive and record his word, mapping out the salvific history. Because of his love, because of his grace for us, he sent his Son to take on human flesh in order to be numbered among the sinners, because of grace alone, Jesus gave up his life on the cross to fulfill the righteousness for us. Now, how do these benefits, how does this righteousness become ours? Do we earn it? Do we take out a subscription? Do we do works? No, the third motto, it is ours by faith alone. You can't as I said, put God in the laboratory? How is it that we know that Jesus died for our sins? Well, his word declares it, and we by faith believe it. How do we know that scripture is God's inspired and inerrant record of his love? Well, it's by faith alone. Scripture defines faith as the assurance things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. Holy Spirit works faith in our hearts through his word, assuring and convicting us of the reality of God's love through Jesus Christ. Since we are incapable of pure acts, we do not know that they are, or we do not know what pure acts are, and if we did, we would not be able to complete them we rely and trust in God's love and righteousness. It is faith alone that makes, us, makes the connection between us and God. Due to faith alone, we see things completely different. This world of death has been lowered in its importance. It has been dwarfed by God's kingdom of life. Distrust 
has been overtaken by trust in the providence, the power, and the love of God. Peace has replaced worry. He is with us. He forgives us. He strengthens us. He gives us life itself. Due to faith, we have the freedom to live in peace, hope, and love, to share his peace, to share his hope, and to share his love with friends and families, with nations, and indeed with the world. Because of faith alone, you understand and live with Jesus, what Jesus says. If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Amen. And now may the peace that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have shown your faithfulness by raising up those in every generation who call your church to repentance and renewal. Continue to raise up voices in our own day who herald the truth of your word and proclaim the faith in purity and truth against all enemies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Everlasting Father, you do not desire the death of sinners, but want all to come to faith and life in Christ. Raise up faithful pastors who will preach your word without fail and teach the doctrine delivered to the saints that many may hear and believe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, your word has been the light and salvation throughout the ages. Help us to bring your grace to those in darkness and grant them freedom through the forgiveness of their sins. Bless the missionaries serving far and near and the new congregations they establish in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of power and might, you have established governments and the order of law for the protection of all people and to preserve the freedom to worship you in spirit and in truth. Grant our president, our governor, the Congress of the United States, and the legislatures of our state wisdom, humility, and integrity, that all may enjoy true justice and the protection of life from its conception to its natural end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God and Father, we pray you to grant us all good things that will benefit us in body and soul and to preserve, prevent anything harmful to us or to our salvation. Teach us to live in contentment with your will and purpose and in the freedom you alone supply to serve you with all our heart, mind, body, and soul. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through your word. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love towards one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, 
keep us steadfast in your word. Curb those who by deceit or sword would wrest the kingdom from your son and bring to naught all he has done. Lord Jesus Christ, your power make known, for you are Lord of lords alone. Defend your holy church that we may sing your praise eternally. Comfort her of priceless worth, send peace and unity on earth, support us in our final strife, and lead us out of death to life. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.